Um, uh, hello. <laughs> um, welcome here. Um, if you're new here today, if you haven't been here for a while, welcome. And um, if uh, we've already said hello to some of our visitors, um, you've already had a taste here today of um, the miraculous power of God. Heard about people receiving the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. You might not, um, if you haven't been to church before, or maybe you've been to some other churches, you might not have heard of that. Um, you've already heard about amazing miracles uh, in people's lives. And uh, who who here has experienced a complete miracle in their life? Yeah, so praise the Lord. Thanks. Um, and you can go around and ask each one of them and amazing stories. And so you're, you're sitting here today in a room amongst people who've had God come into their life and do amazing signs and wonders. And we'd love you love to tell you some more about it. So hang around for a coffee and we'll tell you some more. Um, but we're going to open up our Bibles now. Do you want to turn to Luke chapter 4? You have a good time yesterday? Yep. Um, couldn't make it myself. We were just uh, right in the middle of moving house, but uh, I've already heard some good things about it. So uh, praise the Lord. Uh, forgotten a bit about YouTube lately. Um, I think we're we're on Zoom there again today. Um, so uh, hello to uh, anyone still watching. There's lots of people still watching, and um, and I suppose even in amongst what I talk about today, I want to address those those people who are, who are watching. Uh, maybe you've never been to to one of our meetings before. Um, could be examining us from a distance, and that's okay. But let me tell you, there's nothing like being here. And because uh, uh, on on screen you don't get to experience all of my wonderful brothers and sisters here, so um, we, you know, and the great the great experience of fellowship that we have. This is a place where you'll experience the love of the Lord, um, the the unity of the brethren. You'll experience healing, joy, peace, the guiding of the Lord. So our encouragement is just to come and have a look and to to see what god's doing this is this is not of man you, you know we we're actually not that good the, it's it's the lord's work and um and we praise him for that um <clears throat> the last uh the last few days um that there's uh been the name revival in the in the news again i'm not sure if everyone keeps up with these sorts of things but apparently the front front page of the advertiser yesterday and so it's a little bit, bit hard to avoid these sort of things um let's make it clear for starters that's not this church um but some people might make the association by the word luckily we've also got the uh, geelong revival motoring festival in geelong so um nobody owns the word as such um, the word revival. But as we've talked about before, maybe at times like these, it's easier just to um, refer to us as the Geelong Fellowship. Maybe if you're, if you're having a witness to somebody, um, maybe to avoid questions that don't have anything to do with us. I suppose our hearts go out to spirit-filled people out there, spirit-filled brothers and sisters um, in the in the same town as us who you know, some some of us, you know, we haven't met and um, and who are struggling. And, of course, for those who haven't come to know the, the Lord yet. And that's what we read here in Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. The, Jesus says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That's what Jesus Christ is about, you know, and, and don't let anyone or anything or any situation ever rock your faith in him, you know, and what he came to do for you, because there it is. That's what he came to do for you. And let, let's turn to Psalm 16. Just more along the lines of of what uh, what God wants to do in your life, 
um of of course I, i'm touching on some things that are that are relevant and and topical here but there's there's so many situations in life that might apply more more directly to you about the 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 trouble that the troubles that we can have in life and um and maybe sometimes looking for a for a refuge um you know people do all sorts of things in in looking for for a refuge you know like sometimes unfortunately people go to the bottle you know to to alcohol to to ease the pain um you know people do all sorts of different things to to find find a place of refuge and and we've found it in in the lord and and we want to recommend that to you here and we I'll read from this scripture in in psalm 16 and verse 1 it says preserve me o god for in thee do i put my trust and isn't that the way in the world today you know that sometimes with the noise and the commotion and everything that's around about and we look for a way of preservation preserve me o god for in thee do i put my trust o my soul thou hast said unto the lord thou art my lord my goodness extendeth not to thee. That's a funny phrase, that one in the old English. It, it means keep me, um, or that last bit see, means every good thing I have comes from you. So maybe my, my goodness is not your goodness. Lord, every, every all of the goodness in my life is, is your goodness. So it's talking here, keep me safe, O God, for I have come to you for refuge. Verse 3 says, but to the saints that are in the earth and to the excellent in whom is all my delight, they do exist, you know, and maybe sometimes when, when people lose heart that, you know, sort of looking around at people or whatever, those sorts of things. But here it says, but to the saints that are in the earth, they do exist and we rejoice with each other. All the people said, and, uh, in, in in whom is all my delight. And verse four says, their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Their drink um, offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names unto my lips. Just talking about here that troubles will, will multiply chasing after other gods. And verse five, the Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. And this is the one I got a, a real blessing in talking about here lord you alone are my inheritance my cup he's he's everything in the cup when you've tasted the lord there's no need to put anything else in the cup we were um yeah as i said moving house and uh you know been warm the last couple of days and uh my father-in-law is a great help He's uh, driven all the way over here to help me, and he likes nothing better than an ice cold um, can, bottle, cup of Coke. And uh, unfortunately, at the time, um, all I had was a warm Coke that was sitting in the garage, and I and I offered it, and he said to me, um, "That's like going to a mainline church." <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry to dub you in there, Greg. Um, drinking a drinking a warm Coke. Um, there's there's nothing else that that we need to put in the cup. That the Lord is my inheritance, and um, when all when all said and done, that's all we need. And what does it say then? Thou maintainest my lot. And and really, if I can, that would be a title for the talk or a theme. You guard all that is mine. All that is mine. And when we come to the Lord, we know how wonderful that is. And he maintains it. He's going to look after it. You know that that you've come to him, you've been saved, and he, he's going to he's going to protect what is yours, uh, inheritance from God. We had that storm. When was that? A week ago or something? Um, that that came through, and um, oh, that was sort of uh, that was quite something. We um, I. Um, Blake and Hannah were walking back from uh, from Warren Ponds, and um, they, I said to them, they obviously haven't found about these cool things called apps where you can uh, find out what the weather's doing when you go on a long walk. 
um, because there's lightning strikes and they needed a pickup and I go to pick them up in the car park and I reckon the lightning hit in the car park. Um, and uh, it was like when the lightning and the thunder are instantaneous. Um, and uh, anyway, we when I'd left, there's water rushing down um, in University Park where we were, all of those roads. It's a, you, you could have taken a boat. And, um, and <laughs> while we're packing up the house we got this area where the water overflows and it sits against the back door and then it just floods all through the garage where, uh, you know, stuff was there where we needed to move it. But uh, anyway, um, but you're batting down the hatches, you know, you sort of get inside. I went to do a quote and I just sat in the driveway and messaged him. I said, I have to come another time because you're, you're in the safety of, of where, where, wherever you are. You batten down the hatches and um, you know, my lot remained my house and everything that was in it. Maybe some people who helped me move the other day wished that it hadn't remained, that it would have washed down the street. But, um, and, and here we read, thou maintainest my lot. My inheritance is safe. And, and so don't let anyone or any situation rob you of your joy in the Lord. What did we read at the start? Preserve me, O God. For in thee do I put my trust. Don't let anyone ever convince you that an, our inheritance from God comes through a man or an organization. The Lord is our portion. He, maintain, he maintains our lot. When the, when the storm comes and, and tries to, to break in and take away our inheritance, he guards all that is ours. Um, you want to know, oh no, we've still got some more in Psalm 16. It says, verse 6, the lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. Um, another version says, you have given me a pleasant land, a wonderful inheritance. In verse 7, I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My rains also instruct me in the night seasons. My rains, my heart. You know, let the Lord give counsel to your heart when it's tough and dark. You know, we, we have people here who are testament to that. Verse, uh, verse 8 says, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh, flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Saying he's, he's not going to let us rot in the grave. That's not our inheritance. And, and verse 11, it says, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So as we're reading here in the in um, the, the last part, you know, if you're if you're in the night season, and and like I say, maybe to to those of uh, those people who maybe just sort of checking us out online, and and if it feels dark, your heart will instruct you. Here it says that your the rains, the Lord will give you counsel. Um, went to see a brother the other night. I think he's watching, but um, who. Uh, is in um, the the cancer ward at the moment in um, in uh, Geelong Hospital, and um, and maybe when you read about in the night season here in this passage, you know um, when when times are hard or times are, are, are dark or heavy, it's it's not natural to rejoice. But what a blessing it was to see him, you know, to to talk with him and his family, and in the end, the nurses had to kick us out, and. Um, uh but you know you just it's a it's a wonderful blessing because there's this there's this comfort and there's this knowledge in the lord he maintainest my lot nothing can take away our inheritance let's have a look in the book of ruth got a bit of time here just to have a look at what's well, an amazing story in the bible about uh amazing story about a, a lady um by the name of Ruth. We've got a good Ruth too. Somewhere here. <laughs> um, 
Ruth chapter one. So I'll, I'll read verse one to six for starters. And I, and I feel this is quite related to what, what we're talking about here. You know, this, this, he maintains my lot. Um, and hopefully that, that is starting to make sense. So in verse one, it says, now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech and the name of his wife was Naomi. The name of the two sons, Marlon and Chilion, um, Ephrathites of uh, Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. And she was left and her two sons. And they took with uh, they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpah and the name of the other, Ruth. And they dwelled there about 10 years. And Marlon and Chilion died also, both of them. And the woman was left of her uh, two sons and her husband. And then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. So hopefully you pick up that story. Bethlehem, Judah, uh, they go to Moab. While Naomi's in Moab, her um, her husband and her two uh, sons die, but they'd married, so she's got now two daughters-in-law. So terrible situation, you know, like... And uh, but here it says it this uh, in verse six. So she arose with her daughters in law that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. And I just as I was reading it, um, I was just sort of thinking about being similar with us when we come to the Lord or when we come into this family that you know, we're sort of like, I can see. I can hear the Lord has visited this people. He's working amongst them. And, and so Naomi knew that, but she was removed. She'd gone from Bethlehem, Judah to Moab, but then she heard how the Lord had visited her people and was feeding them. And, and then the story goes on with uh, Naomi, Ruth and, and Orpah and um, verse, well, um, Naomi sort of said, um, "You, you, uh, you girls from uh, from Moab, stay here. Like I'm going back to my to my home country and homeland. And uh, you know, but they were they were you know going to come with her. And she said, I can't give you more husbands. You know, like uh, and and Orpah did return, but Ruth here we read in verse sixteen says, entreat." me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee for whither thou goest i will go and where thou lodgest i will lodge thy people shall be my people and thy god my god and just thinking here that as a just sort of drawing on a few scriptures that even in the night season in a in a dark time in naomi's life that maybe her testimony had convinced ruth you know like for for ruth to to speak these words, you know, that where you go, I will go and and your God will be my God. You know, that's to, to see, to see that testimony in, in um, Naomi. So let's turn over to chapter two and verse one. And it says, and Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth of the family of Elimelech. And his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabites said unto Naomi, let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, go my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And her hap was to light on the part on a part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. So when we read here, Ruth didn't know where she was going. Her hap, sort of by chance, as it were, you know, but as we know, God had a plan for her. And just as he does for us, you imagine Ruth giving her testimony, you know, like uh, as we would when this story was finished, uh, talking about her, her hap was to light on the field of Boaz, you know, like I just happened to by coincidence. No, it was the Lord. 
you know, and 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 as we read in Psalm 16, it said, the lines have fallen unto me in pleasant places. And as the Lord is directing Ruth's life and as the Lord directs our life, the lines have fallen unto me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. Those were the, the words we were reading by the psalmist. So as we read on here in verse 4, it says, And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless thee. Then said Boaz unto his servant that was set over the reapers, Whose damsel is this? And the servant that was set over uh, the reapers answered and said, It is the Moabitish damsel that uh, came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. And she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and hath continued even from the morning until now that she tarried a little in the house. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Hearest thou not, my daughter? Go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens. There's some amazing lines in this story. We read here, go not to glean in another field. And and you sort of look at what the Lord's done here. And 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 Ruth has come and and she's able to to join with the reapers and 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 to get a, the grain and the food. And Boaz is saying, You're welcome. Don't go anywhere else. The Lord feeding his people, the Lord guiding and directing. Go, don't go back to the world anymore. It's good here. You know, and that's what we take out of the story. The lions have fallen in pleasant places. We have a goodly heritage. We don't need to go anywhere else. We have have the Lord's heritage. So um, verse 9, it says, Let thine eyes be on the field that they do uh, reap, and go thou after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? And when thou art a thirst, go unto the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Just like God's provided the Holy Spirit for us. Just provided it for us. You know, the, the living water. And uh, verse 10 says, Then sh uh, she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes, that thou uh, shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? And Boaz answered and said unto her, It hath fully been showed me, all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband, and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother and the land of thy nativity, and art come unto a people which thou knowest not heretofore. So we read here, why me? And we might have that thought sometimes, why did God choose me? Like, like Ruth, he saw a heart that was dedicated and faithful to him happy to even leave her homeland behind, happy to leave it all behind, to, to be dedicated and faithful to the Lord. And, and verse 12, the Lord recompense thy work and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel under whose wings thou art come to trust. And maybe she learned to trust again, you know, like that she'd been through a, a not a nice situation and uh, and here she was, um, maybe maybe hoping and following, and then she she landed in the blessing of the Lord, and whose wings thou art come to trust, and uh, praise the Lord that we're able to to do that too to trust in the Lord. Verse thirteen says, then uh, she said, let me find favour in thy sight, my Lord, for thou that thou hast comforted me and for that thou hast spoken friendly unto thine handmaid, though I be not like unto one of thine handmaids. And Bo Boaz, no, he said Bozo, Boaz said unto her, at mealtime come thou hither and eat of the bread and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers and he reached uh, her parched corn and, and she did eat and was sufficed and left. And like just touching on here that that God will feed us, that He has He has prepared a table for us, 
And just uh, just to finish this part of the story in, in verse 15 and 16, it says, And when she was risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and reproach her not, and let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her, and leave them that she may glean them and rebuke her not. And one more little thought is, is he could have given her everything, but she still had to be diligent. She still had to pick it up, you know. She had to to rock up and pick it up, you know. That that there was going to be grain left for her to to pick up, and uh, and we also need to be diligent, you know, in our walk in the Lord. That we start by doing the small things that we're able to do. At the end of the day, she still had more than than what she ever expected, but she still had to pick it up. And uh, and that's uh, the active thing of us of us walking with the Lord. When she went home to her mother-in-law, you know, she's, where did you get all of this? And and what a blessing it was. Ruth told her, and they rejoiced together. Ruth, the Moabite woman, um, she became the great grandmother of King David. And you see what a, what a blessing from from dark times, from hard times to to the Lord's blessing. The lines that scripture in in Psalm sixteen in the Amplified it says the boundary lines of the land have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, my heritage is beautiful to me. And so maybe reading the psalmist and seeing seeing the the guidance of the Lord and the blessing of the Lord play out in Ruth's life and to know it in our life, you know, like that there is a refuge under the wing of the Lord God of Israel to trust in him. Another, uh, another storm story. I was in, um, in uh, Zambia years ago and it was, uh, it was pretty cool watching the storms over there. We'd sort of be sitting around in the afternoon. I don't think we were having a meeting, but we are just having fellowship. And you'd sort of, you'd sort of watch um, thunderstorms 360 on the horizon. It wasn't above us, but you'd just see them everywhere, just like um, thunderstorms. And um, one night, one did hit us. And um, I was with Pastor Eddie, um, who looks after the work there in Zambia, and Pastor Ron. And... Um, Normally we would sleep in um, in a tent which was under a hut or something like that, so you'd get double protection just in case of the rain. And um, but this night that wasn't going to do, so we actually slept in the four wheel drive. And um, not small blokes. There's three of us sort of trying to sleep in a in a four wheel drive in a just a dual cab Ute. And um, but the, the bad bit was that. We're in this village. There was about thirty kids who, when the rain came, they're all banging on the doors and they all want to come in. But like it was just, we'd had a great time with them and and whatever. But there was that just wasn't physically possible. And so, Pastor Eddie's like, no, no, no. <laughs> um, but um, anyway, they survived as well. But um, it's not like that here. Um, you could feel like you're out in the storm and um, in the cold come in there's a refuge and under his wing in in whom we've come to trust um the the lord god don't don't ever give up don't ever lose faith don't don't look at people and and blame people or get bitter it's in the lord god that we trust his is in his inheritance that he's given to us and he'll look after it he maintained us my lot. But you do have to make the choice to pick up the handfuls of grain, like Ruth, you know, that the Lord leaves for you. That the, the Lord is going to leave, leave that for you. He, he's, he's going to, to lead and guide you and, and feed you. But you've got to be diligent about that. Um, turn back to Psalm 16. We're going to finish there. Maybe in ju just in, in wrapping it up, um, 
Macy was already talking about um, 12 years ago. And uh, there's many stories in this room. Praise the Lord for the many stories in this room. Wonderful stories of how the Lord has guided people, how he's looked after their inheritance. And, you know, that that when we, when we come to know him, that we have this amazing future. And, you know, if, if, you, if you are hearing these things for the first time today, you know, and, and you're, you're here with us, there's an opportunity for you to know the living God, to live forever, to say goodbye to the things of this world, to not be, not have the weight of all of these things that come against us and knock us down, you know, whether they affect us directly, indirectly, all of those things that were, might even rock your world. You know, and and you, and you can lose trust, and you can lose faith, and you can lose, you know, everything. You can lose heart. You know, but there's an opportunity for you to come to know the living God, to be baptized by full immersion. We're more than happy to to baptize you here today, to start your new life with the Lord, to start it clean, to receive the Holy Spirit. You'll know that God is alive because He'll give you a new language that you'll you'll speak in a moment. You know, if you call out to him, he's promised it to you. And that Holy Spirit will lead and guide you through this life and forever. That's an inheritance and it's for you. He wants to set those beautiful boundary lines in place for you to that they fall in, in pleasant places. And that's what I was sort of just thinking and just finishing here, you know, for us, um, I'll talk about my wife while she's not here. Um, but you know, she, sort of a bit like Ruth, I suppose that, um, years ago when we talked about going somewhere and she said, where you go, I will go. And, um, and the, the, the blessing, you know, like that, that then proceeded from there. And like I say, that's happened in everyone's life here. You know, how, how we come to be together. The Lord has worked individually in each of your life. And there's, there's all these wonderful stories, how the Lord has set that in place and he's looked after it for you to, to, to be here in, in his blessing, in, in his refuge. Um, one of the things, and you, you see that guidance. One of the things that happened was that, um, early on. So like I say, my, my wife had said that and, and uh, we hadn't told anybody that we were moving to Geelong, and um, and she's walking down the down the beach at one of our camps in Adelaide, and um, a lady that she hadn't met before, and this lady starts talking to her about a cousin that she's got in Geelong, who um, who um, yeah, she was talking to about the Lord, but she's going, oh, we don't have a fellowship there, do we? And um, and Amanda's like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Um, and, uh, you know, shortly after that, you know, um, Pastor Jock, who you, many know well now, um, he was talking about it's um, it's time um, that we we had a fellowship in a place like Geelong and um, and uh, went to Pastor Jock after that meeting and said, we're moving. And um, you just sort of see the Lord's hand in that. And and even in in recent times um, and and for like I say, for each one of you you see how the Lord has done these just amazing things to, to look after your inheritance, to bring you into his refuge, to, to, um, to keep you safe. We'll finish by reading this scripture again. Verse five, the Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. He maintains our lot. He guards all that is ours to live forever with him. All the people said, amen. I'm going to hand to Anthony for communion.